él no lo motiva ni el dinero ni las comodidades. Lo motivan los grandes objetivos. Es eh, la manera de manejarse él, eh, lo honesto que es, eh, lo gran técnico que es. Yo creo que es un, uno de los ten, mejores técnicos del mundo. En los años 90, un ex player de Argentina, Newell's Old Boys, returned to his former club and transformed their fortunes. After winning two league titles, he remains a legend to this day. Para el hincha de Ñul es un, es un, un ídolo fundamental. Es, es un dios para nosotros. Bueno, para mí es como un sinónimo de, de maestro, de, de un maestro que, que tuve durante siete u ocho años en las divisiones juveniles de Newell y en el primer equipo de, profesional de, de Newell. El, la persona que nos enseñó muchísimo. Una persona que nos contagia a, a casi todo ese equipo las ganas de, de ser entrenador, de dirigir, de de vivir por el fútbol y para el fútbol. Marcelo Bielsa brought pride and passion back to Newell's old boys. Carried shoulder high by his players on winning the 1990 league title, his defiant and expletive Newell's Carajo remains the fans' war cry to this day. He went on to become one of the most respected coaches in world football, leading Argentina to Olympic gold in 2004, transforming Chilean football as national coach and again at club level with athletic Bilbao. His admirers are many, including Manchester City coach Pep Guardiola and Tottenham Hotspur manager Maurizio Pochettino, who Bielsa signed as a 13-year-old at Newell's Old Boys. Marcelo Bielsa has got a vision of life which is admirable, the principles that he applies to his day-to-day -day life. There is an enigma about him. Creates an aura, surrounded by pupils, uh, otherwise known as disciples, and that creates a cult of the personality. Victor and I went over to um, to Buenos Aires. We sat in a uh, in a in a hotel with him for um, for effectively 12 hours. What what we found very quickly was he's not a man who wanted to be sold to. You know, he, he we, we felt that we were going to have to explain to him the vision of Leeds and the potential of Leeds. Um, but he got that straight away. He he understood it. Eh, me parece que es una persona que se fija mucho en en objetivos, en logros que no sean tan fáciles. Lo fácil, lo quizás eh, lo aburra. Eh, a él le interesan los desafíos difíciles, desafíos eh, que tengan que ver también mucho con, con el corazón que le pueda poner él y, y las personas que van a trabajar con él. En cuanto a el Leeds, es un, un grande del fútbol inglés que, que hace rato que no es grande. Él creo que vio en su, en su imaginación volver a ser al lead uno de los grandes de Inglaterra. Y esa motivación y ese objetivo eh, seguramente lo motivó muchísimo para poder intentarlo. En going for Bielsa, I think it was an admission that they, they needed to bite the bullet for the head coach. They needed to find somebody with that track record, with that proven ability, um, or, or at least that, that kudos um, and that aura that could, could get the club, get a hold of the club and change the culture of it, change the way in which they played gain the respect to the players, which I think at times over the years has, has definitely been an issue. One of my jobs was to, was to get the contract signed and agree the commercial terms, and one of the frustrating things was I couldn't get him to talk or, 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 or debate or engage in that subject at all. Él mira mucho los detalles de cada uno de los clubes que dirige, eh, y no solamente la parte deportiva o la parte del club, Leeds. Eh, mira la, estudia la, la ciudad, estudia la gente, estudia todo lo que rodea a, a Leeds como ciudad, donde, donde la gente le interesa ir, qué lee, cómo se, cómo se mueve la gente por la ciudad. Si no hay una ciudad que lo, que lo, lo haga sentir enamorado de la ciudad, eh, no va a ir. Es decir, Bielsa no fue a dirigir el Leeds por el Club Leeds. Bielsa fue a dirigir el Leeds por la ciudad en su conjunto. 
So with, even though we were only in uh, Buenos Aires for 24 hours, um, you know, we shook hands uh, knowing that he was going to be the next Leeds United head coach, um, but not knowing anything about what the contract was going to contain. Val, consideré la fortaleza del proyecto deportivo e institucional, analicé las posibilidades deportivas y, bueno, eso hizo que hiciera esfuerzos para, para ser el, el que finalmente eligieron. Bueno, los entrenadores eh, no tenemos otra opción que imponer lo que pensamos porque no se puede convencer eh, proponiendo algo en lo que uno no cree. He comes with the nickname El Loco and because you, you only have the, the chance to read about him and to, to analyze him in that way before he arrives, you have this picture of a crazy individual in no way level-headed, you know, loose cannon who could do anything at the drop of a hat. But I think in, in the flesh and in practice, he, obsessional is the word, he, he wants things to be right. I think he's great. I think he's uh, honestly one of the best in the world. Um, he had a great impact on me and he's, I hope he promotes, honestly. He's single-minded in a way that, that very few head coaches I've seen before are. He, he keeps the players at arm's length, he keeps the media at arm's length. He strikes me as a guy who has nothing on his mind at any stage of the day apart from football. I think it has been his life for a long time. All of us were like, well, wow, we're about to work a whole season for one of the best managers. Everybody speaks so highly of him, do you know what I mean? So straight away, like, no matter what he wants done, you, you, you say he's standing like, yeah, yeah, absolutely no problem. I thought this could be a spectacular failure. It could be spectacularly brilliant. Do my homework, start to think, wow, this, this guy's a bit different. There's people are talking about him in a, in a quite a special way. Probably the most honest guy that I've ever met in football. He was very, very um, obsessed with no cheating, never cheating, never try, try to be honest every time you are on the pitch. Marcelo was very, very specific on the additions we needed to make and was actually much more focused on what he could get out of the uh, existing squad. And so the players that he said would step out up, so players who potentially had been written off by the fan base like uh, you know, Liam Cooper and, and, and Calvin Phillips, they were specific players that Marcelo said, I will make them the best players in the league. Oh, I think he's lovely. <laughs> no, I'd love to bump into him. He walks around Weatherby sometimes. I'm always going to get those and go to Weatherby. <laughs> I, I, I heard it was in Costas. I'd like to bump into him and say, I'm Calvin's grandma. <laughs>
Andrea bought a club that had suffered a humiliating fall from grace. And the legendary manager, Don Reavy, Leeds established themselves as a dominant force during the 1960s and 70s. Leeds United, all in white, against the Gunners, Arsenal. Jones as he kicks to Alan Clark, who heads it in. On the pitch, Captain Billy Bremner was their leader. They became England's top team and were feared and respected across the whole of Europe. Jack Charles and Bremner. Oh, beautiful goal! What a superb goal by Bremner! After Reevy left to become England manager in the mid-70s, Leeds had over a decade in the doldrums before returning to be crowned English champions again in 1992. At the turn of the century, they became a force in Europe again and reached the Champions League semi-finals in 2001. But after overspending and financial mismanagement, Leeds went into freefall. A fire sale of their greatest talent was inevitable. Rio Ferdinand became Britain's most expensive player when he moved to bitter rivals Manchester United for 30 million pounds. And Leeds were forced to sell stars like Robbie Fowler, Jonathan Woodgate and Harry Kuehl. You were never quite sure where the next crisis was coming from, whether the people who were in charge of the club could manage the crisis. What many considered the most exciting young side in England was ripped apart. Leeds were relegated from the Premier League in 2004 and dropped to the third tier three years later. You're in, right? <laughs> New owners and managers have come and gone. Their long-suffering fans convinced they're a cursed club. But after 15 years in the wilderness, hope is returning to Ellen Road. In terms of a city um, and a club being combined, or the potential for it to be combined, I don't think there's another city like it. United, and they are heading out of the Premier League. Who would have thought this? That's football. James Hayden scores the only goal of the League One playoff final. There is the final whistle. It's a rather forlorn looking Ellen Road that will trudge home in the rain. And there is the full time whistle. Neil Warnock heads straight to the sanctity of the dressing room. The final whistle goes. But it will be a night the Leeds United boss will want to forget. The wait for his first victory as Leeds United manager goes on. I'm very excited now to be here and I hope to do a good job to deliver some good results. We're here to announce our manager, as all of you know, uh, we appointed Marcelo Bielsa. It starts with uh, Andrea's ambition. Marcelo understands that. He understands the scale of the challenge. He understands the scale of the prize. I've said before, I think getting Leeds back into the Premier League is one of the biggest jobs in, in world football. Welcome to a brand new era at Ellen Road. Fair play to the club, the owner. He's made a statement. It's a bold statement. There's not been any higher profile that came to the football club to manage it. When you listen to some of the statements for some of the top managers in the world talking about them, they rate them very, very highly. A lot of commentators out there are saying, does he understand the championship well enough? I think people want to see his, uh, his philosophy in action. We must have looked in into the history of the club. Baduka! It's four! Fortune favours a brave and it has uh, favoured us. Back there! Yeah! Look at the crowds again. One football club in a big set. They know the football, you can't kid them. You have to be honest with them, be up front. And if you're that, and they see that you're giving everything within your body that you can give them, they'll be happy with you. The target will always be to get promoted. We'll have a right good go again. Pablo Hernandez! And Helder Costa's in the penalty area. Oh, yes! Dallas in space! Stuart Dallas scores for Leeds United. What a move that is. Harrison. Oh, what a goal from Matthias Click. 
What a day this is turning into. Oh, what a strike! Oh, what a goal that is from Patrick Bamford. And it comes back for a drive. Oh, my word! What a goal! What a goal that is from Leeds United. White header. Calvin Phillips, the Leeds lad on the centenary day. What a story. There it is. The full time whistle goes. And Leeds United have lost again. And they've lost by two goals to nil. Hopefully, things will change around. And like we can get some kind of form back. Ball breaks for Ealing. Oh! Oh, what a finish! Patrick Bamford scores for Leeds! All the way for Ali Oski! Oh, what about that? Gets a ball in! And Jack Harrison has surely racked up a massive win for Leeds United. And it's there! And it's driven in from the penalty spot. Phillips who curls it. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, what about that? How's that for a finish? Hernandez scores the goal for Leeds!